Hello, I'm Beth Berry. I'm Vice President of Business Development for Real Green Systems. We are based in Wald Lake, Michigan, and today I'm broadcasting live from my home in Indianapolis, Indiana. We appreciate you joining us at www.realgreen.com forward slash impact for a series of webinars with important industry leaders. And every day on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we talk about what's new in the industry. Today, my guest is Jeff Collignan from Xperia Green. Jeff and I have been friends for many, many years, and I'm going to have him introduce himself and give you a background and green industry history. Jeff, thanks for joining me today. Tell me where you're at and a little quick bio on every everything you've done in the green industry. Of course. Thank you, Beth. Thanks for having me. Well, right out of college, like a lot of us old green industry people, we've I started when I was 22 years old with a company called Barefoot Grass way back in the day in uh, 1990. And it was with Barefoot for a number of years and became a regional director for Barefoot. And um, it was 1997 when True Green bought Barefoot Grass and uh, went to work for True Green for a while. And it was, it was actually a fantastic experience. Learned a ton at True Green. Was there for a few years and then uh, took a position as regional director for the West Division at Scott's. And that's where you and I met. Yes. And that would have been in 2002 or 2003, I think, when, when you and I met. And was we with, had a lot of fun. What's that? We had a lot of fun at Scott's. <laughs> yeah, we did. And those are, those are some fun days. And, and well, anyway, don't, don't get me off track here because there's a couple of things I'm starting to laugh about right now. But anyway, I was with uh, Scott's for a number of years um, through, I think it was eight years and uh, became the uh, senior director for the West Division, running the Western uh, United States for Scott's. And then I took a, a little hiatus from lawn care for a while, about uh, six and a half, seven years, went, went into home improvement and learned a ton about business to consumer marketing that a lot of tactics and things that we didn't do in, in the lawn care business. And then in mid 2016, uh, kicked uh, Xperia Green off with John Main. And um, here we are today, three and a half years later and growing, we're still growing. In the last three, four weeks since all this stuff started happening, we've stayed very consistent with sales. I don't think there's been a, a variance and it is spring and it is warm enough. The interest is, is moving. We're definitely not hitting our budgeted number of sales. However, we're close and we're maintaining about the same number of sales the last three weeks in a row. So the demand is still there. That's awesome. Tell us a little more about Xperia Green. Are you exclusively chemical lawn care and what cities are you operating in? Xperia Green Lawn Care, we, we have a combination of, of natural and synthetic programming that we use. We do train shrub care in select markets, perimeter pest control, and we also do mosquito control, aeration and seeding, insect control, you know, anything to keep the lawn weed free and green and keep, keep yourself pest free as well. And of course, we do grub control. And I invited you on here today because it's such an important period of sales. You know more about sales than anybody I know in this industry. And um, I think it's really important to understand how to shift the messaging per se, but certainly not to retreat from the sales. Many of our customers that are still in full production have suggested that they're actually never had a warmer reception from consumers when you show up at the door because we're expected to be there in the spring. Right. And um, that's why I called this doubling down on sales. I, you put together a fantastic presentation. If you want to walk us through what you guys are doing. And first of all, thank you so much for sharing with the rest of the industry. Yeah. Not everyone's ready to show everyone else what they do. As Joe Cusick would say, I always tell everyone what I do because you're either going to do it differently or everyone has their unique proprietary advantage. So thanks very much for sharing okay. with the industry. Well, and you know, I've always said, there's a lot of playbooks out there and a lot of good playbooks, and it's how you execute the playbook that equals your success. So I'm free to share what we do 
Uh, we're very diversified now uh, from an online perspective, from a digital perspective, uh, pull sales, push sales, and I'll get into that. But, you know, executing this, you got to be tough to be in the lawn care business and you got to be consistent. Very good. Show us your presentation. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, Beth. All right. Do you have it up? We can see it. Okay. Well, first things, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take everyone through marketing efforts that support your sales efforts. And the first piece that I'm gonna take everyone through are it's what I call pull sales. Those are initiatives that you do from a perspective that it it forces people to call you because they're interested in your messaging, they're interested in your lawn care services. So Currently, with with all this COVID-19 going on, we, we really want to make sure that our brand is exposed it, two to three times more in front of people instead of hitting people once or twice. We're following up with people four and five times, and I'll get into how we do that here in, in a few minutes. But the current marketing efforts, pull selling, is... Of course, our website, we're, we're having direct traffic to our website, direct mail, uh, email, I'm really big into email campaigning with non-permission-based emails, and, and Google PPC, okay? Excellent. The other hey, one, the other one. one for you, JC. What's I, that? I've got a lot of people in the industry who debate whether or not door-to-door -door is, um, viable in any market. And I know you guys have done a terrific job in the past. Yeah. Have you um, excluded that altogether from your marketing strategy right now? No. So I'll get into that when we okay. start when we start doing when I so I'm going to go through the marketing piece and okay. then I'm going to go through what I call the push sales. That is what door to door is about. Gotcha. I'm sorry. In the push sales. Yeah. And the last thing there is the uh, social media, all things social. And we're really big into that now. I hired a, a a marketing whiz, an online whiz, and, and she is phenomenal. And uh, we have some support also at our corporate office, and they work uh, in tandem on the social media efforts. And we're really getting a lot of exposure through social media as well. All right. Wonderful. Next thing. So. We want to, you know, everybody wants really to immediately address the 800-pound grill in the room. We do that on the phone calls. We make customer contacts. Here we have our homepage uh, on our website, and you know every you know if you haven't done so, I'm sure you know if, if people listen to the webinars with NALP, uh, we of course we listened intent intensely uh, on the messaging that they had out there, and we integrated that within our website. So um, on our homepage, we address it and we designed a dedicated page uh, so we can discuss that. I recommend doing that. The next thing is, here's the NALP notice. We have specifically what they outlined. And again, this this right here is, it's really a beautiful selling tool too. To, and when we're on the phone with people a lot, and I get into this later in the presentation, we direct people to our website as we're talking to them on the phone. We're proud of our website, it looks fantastic. And we can reference the NALP notice and what we at Xperia Green are doing to make sure we keep everyone safe from employees to our customers. Wonderful. Improving website visibility. We use tools like Google Analytics to assess Xperia Green's website traffic. This is really important. You know, as we see our customers and prospects turning, turning to the web more than ever for information, and everyone's looking on the web for information about COVID-19, et cetera, et cetera. We really want to keep and implement website or our best practices with our website while we update our brand messaging and design to more effectively boost our website traffic. And week over week, year over year, and, and here's what we're finding is phenomenal. Our website, we did update it. Uh, our, our director of marketing, she she did update the website. She built a brand new website, and it's it's updated. It looks phenomenal. And what we're finding is we're we're a 53 percent increase in website traffic week over week, year over year. 
and and that's that's really phenomenal and so you know our goal then is to capture those website visitors so my point in showing this slide is the interest for lawn care is still there it's springtime and people are interested there's a little more window shopping going on right now than there used to be at, at, on April 1st. You got a little more direct calls, a little more direct traffic, but that's why you have to implement and utilize all these things to ensure that you're, you're in front of people more and more and more often with a great message. And let me take you back. Don't you agree? I would say in the last five years, even those that aren't going to directly buy on your website, they're gonna preview and compare your website and services to others before they make that buying decision. Well, there's no question, and we're seeing a ton of that. And you know, the beauty of putting all of these digital pieces together is that we want, we want to make sure wherever they're searching and how they're searching, we are in front of them and you know like this next slide we have daily analytics reporting and tracking our website visitors our live visitors per location our unique visitors pages viewed per session and all traffic sources etc as you can see on that graph that i have laid out there uh, look at the blue there the blue are brand new visitors to our website so that's 85% of our visitors, and it's thousands of people visiting. I'm not going to give the exact number, but it's it's phenomenal the people that are being driven to our website, and it's really through all of our digital efforts that's happening. And if you look at the graph, shoot, we're up at the end of March, uh, better than we were at the beginning of March, and this is really four weeks into COVID-19. The whole case in point here is people are still searching. And you guys are what, three years old? Three year old company? We're only three, yeah, old. three years. Nice. Yeah. Next slide. Improving website visibility, conducting regular website audits to improve site performance, traffic, and user experience. So we do have our own internal webmaster here. Like I said, she's phenomenal. And she just ran this the other day and our website health score is 98 percent and i know it was probably two or probably three months ago i think but i think real green offers this service i would recommend everyone to get a website audit and really understand what your google score is and what the health of your website is because you have tons of technical errors that can prevent your website from being easily indexed by google and you know you want your website to be easily indexed absolutely I, a technical website audit, we run those regularly to quickly spot any kind of errors that impede your user experience and really, really hurt your SEO. And that's really the name of the game right now is, is what your SEO is. There's, there's, you know, there's so much talk about SEO and do you come up when somebody types in lawn care services near me? So you got to keep this, you know, I would recommend doing one of these audits every two weeks. I know an area runs one every single week. Improving website visibility, conducting keyword research to improve search rank. You know, it is, I don't really have enough time to get into all the particulars about improving your search rank, but there's a whole slew of things. And, and frankly, you know, any good website auditing software that you can get will really teach and coach you how to do this of course you have to have someone in order to carry it out but it will it will tell you you know how you rank and what you need to optimize optimize and you Go mentioned ahead. that real green marketing does offer this service and um absolutely if you reach out to me we have a real green resource that i can provide to help you along those lines well and 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 also um when you sent, because you had, had done a complimentary audit for us right before we hired Ineri. And I gave her that audit and she really went through it. And then we purchased our own software because we, you know, we do it weekly. So it it had it it was very functional and it had all the things that she does. And uh, like I said, we have our own internal persons, we do it ourselves, but I would highly recommend if you don't do it at least once a month. 
you, you really should because a lot of things can happen over a 30-day period in this web world. Well, Google changes the rules all the time. You better be right on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. So we also optimize our pages on the website. You know, we have 140 pages on our website. So you have to optimize every page. You have to keep it optimized. You have to keep your keyword searches optimized and updated. And you really need to do your external and your internal link building on the website to increase your traffic flow. So knowing how and when your customers search the web for you know, our, our lawn care services, it's vitally important to us. We need to know how they search and when they search. And we identify our valuable keyword targets and develop a plan to improve our rank every single week. This is really something that you know we started doing this year, Google Map integration on our website to match our Google My Business listings. Um, that's on our service pages to boost our local SEO. So, you know, you could have like we have a location in Columbus and it's the city of Columbus zip code. But you want to maximize this by integrating, you know, your Google map to show all the service zip codes that you service and all your key cities that you service as well. And that's going to help boost your local SEO. Developing content to drive website traffic. You know, we, we really stay on top of this. I think we have about 150 blogs that we've, that we've written over time. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to have some very experienced green industry people that are really good at providing content. And, of course, you know, we dress it up so it's, it's blog worthy, as we like to talk about. So publishing more unique content on the website via blog posts and sharing on social media to boost our organic traffic is really working well for us. And we one, uh, one of our uh, digital specialists here came up with an idea called Weed Wednesday. And it's something cute that they do. And they talk about, you know, weed control and things like that. And we have a little bit, a little different take on what weeds are popping up right now, how we control them. And again, this is all to drive traffic to our website, organic traffic, new traffic to our website through social media and also through blogging. And we are very fortunate that we're in an industry that provides so much content um, just that really attracts attention. And you guys do a terrific job. I follow you on all the socials, but it could be December 15th and you guys are still putting out great content that keeps homeowners engaged. Right. Yeah, we and we consistently do that as well uh, to to keep them engaged. But also we we do a ton of email marketing and the email marketing. We have to keep our platforms warmed up so you can you, you can't just shut those platforms down. You, you have to keep them active. So, you know, it it uh, it provides uh, uh, a good opportunity to reach people over the winter. And I'll tell you, we know we 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 have a, a software where we track exactly who's coming, you know, their IP address and their email address. And it is unbelievable how many visitors are visiting our blogs. We're also using this downtime to generate more compelling content that can drive more prospects to the website. And when you say downtime, what are you referring to downtime? Who is well, having downtime? You, you know, it, I guess it it because everyone's working remotely, it almost seems like, you know, our, our two people that do social media and website, the amount of content they're pushing out now compared to when they're in the office is unbelievable. It's probably because they have more time to focus and are not getting distracted. I was going to say, I, I'm more highly productive when I'm at home. I don't like it as well because I'm a water cooler kind of gal, but I do get a lot more done. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. Developing content to drive website traffic continued, adopting and publishing social media content to the new normal. You know, it's really important to do this. We're carefully changing content on social media to reflect the current situation and keeping it really positive and keeping it inspirational and, and talking about, hey, look, it is springtime. Let's be let's be joyful about springtime coming. You're still going to want to have the lawn looking good. You still don't want the weeds in your lawn. And really, times like this, and when there's been economic downturns, the green industry has always survived very well. Website design and analytics. 
We have live chat integration on the website to help online visitors with questions in real time. And uh, we're also currently getting set up with LawnBot as well. Nice. Real quick question on that. Who mans that chat? Is it customer service or sales? It's both. You know, we, we, we have people that are on chat. We have it covered at all times. So we have a few customer service reps that are really, really good at it. We have a couple sales reps that are really good at it and can type fast as well. So everybody has their time uh, that they're up for chat. Website design analytics continue our focus on remarketing campaigns and installing code to capture unique IP addresses of website visitors and retargeting them via display ads and email campaigns. I'm really big into non-permission based emails. It's, it's, it's a skill, it's a talent that you have to have certain people involved in making this thing work the right way. And we're talking about the the integrating our emails with our web traffic so we track all website form fields daily we match them with the daily esr so we make sure that we're not missing any of the people that are filling out a form we want to know where our sales are coming from so we can push that and so we're consistently doing daily analytics and the data further helps us to tweak our digital marketing efforts to drive more website conversion rates. And so we get a better ROI on what we're doing. We put our money where the biggest bang for the buck is. That's the reason for doing the analytics on a daily basis. On that retargeting, you've got to be really clever and on yeah. message when you revisit that. I looked at a Peloton online. I'm missing my gym. And I know you're a gym kind of guy, although you probably got a great basement set up. And right now, my friend, I am one hostess Twinkie away from the next pant size. Wow. So I looked at, I looked at Peloton.com and then I, I, you know, I closed it and they have been very clever with how they're retargeting me. Yeah. Well, we do a lot of that too. We took a little page out of e-commerce and, um, uh, we always joke that, you know, we do a lot of R and D that's rip off and duplicate. And, you know, you gotta have, you gotta look for ideas. Ideas are everywhere. And, you know, we started doing a really sweet retargeting campaign and it's pretty incredible. You get somebody that clicks and opens one of our emails and they don't do anything. Of course we capture that. We know who they are. Then we retarget them with a nurturing series of emails, hey, you left without saying goodbye. We send them another message a few days later. We just wanna make sure that we're top of mind with all these people that had a little bit of interest. So when they do, when they are ready to buy, we're there. Yeah, the day that dandelion pops, they're your top of mind. Exactly. Connecting customers and prospects via email marketing, daily analytics, reporting on all emails, we measure delivery rates, open rates, click-through rates, and call tracking. One of the unique things <clears throat> that we do that not many lawn care companies do, I learned this in another business that I ran. We hygiene our emails against phone numbers. So you have the email address, the house address matching the email address, along with the last name, the first name, and also a matching phone number, typically you get one or two. I'd say about 40% of all the email addresses we have, have a matching phone number. So what we do is on a daily basis, anyone that clicks and opens one of our emails and they don't take action, we download that list, we have it in a format, we, we put it into SA, and it's called our responders list, we toss it on the auto dialer and we call through these people. And, you know, I'm not going to give away all the secrets and all the scripting and stuff like that, but it works pretty darn well. And people don't think it's creepy uh, at all. And we get a lot of good conversations. And the whole point of this, just imagine doing this over time. And you get a monster database of marketing to be able to do by doing this type of thing. Focus on retargeting. I kind of just went through that, but the, the point of this slide is 
We do, we're serving more impressions for made mobile ads via IP retargeting. You know, and anybody can do this and we would just buy, buy a chunk of advertisement. It's not that expensive. And everybody is, is, has seen this before. If you're searching on the web for a drill at Home Depot, next thing you know, anytime you're close to Home Depot, boom, a batter ad comes across uh, for you know the drills that they have for sale at Home Depot. We do the same exact thing. So whether you open an email, you get a direct mail piece from us, um, you see us on social media, you read a blog, or you get a made mobile advertisement, we're going to make sure that we're top of mind no matter what source of digital uh, you're looking at. And the made mobile, that is? That's, that's the made mobile. It's, it's, a, it's a mobile ad advertising through direct, through, through direct IP retargeting. And so what we do is with all of our email addresses we have, we know what their IP address is. And we, we do it pretty smartly, though. Anywhere we send a direct mail piece and what zip codes that we have, those are the places we get our, our email addresses from. Those are the places we get our IP addresses from. And then that way we can do these banner ads. So in our service area, yeah. So that's where we start. We don't just get a bunch of email addresses randomly. We get them in our, our zip codes and all our service areas through our seven locations uh, throughout the country. Excellent. And we're constantly, we hygiene those about four times a year too. And that's important to keep the fresh list and updated so you're not wasting money. So taking a little piece out of e-commerce, if somebody, if somebody hits, uh, clicks or opens one of our emails, they don't do a form fill, we send them a you left without saying goodbye. I mean, how can you resist this little guy? According to a study conducted by Brilliance, over 75% of shoppers abandon sites without completing their purchase. This is huge. So that's why we retarget them. And then if they open this email, you left without saying goodbye, we know they're interested. They get another one. So with the ingre increased browsing data, now's a good time to re-engage with previous website visitors. So if you go to our website and you abandon it without becoming a customer, if you open an email and abandon it without becoming a customer, we send you, you left without saying goodbye. And we do this within 24 to 48 hours. So if you go to our website and we don't have your IP address associated with an email address, I have a service that I immediately hygiene those and I get about a 50% match rate on emails and boom, 48 hours later, they're going to they're gonna get a you left without saying goodbye. So, nice. so far, we're getting about a 10% open rate on these and that's incredible on a non-permission based email. Wonderful. Using digital advertising tools like Google Ads, PPC to expand our, our reach. You know, we do this. We conduct daily and literally hourly analytics of PPC data and optimizing the campaigns. And Neri has those up all the time. And she's constantly testing different daily ads. She's constantly testing different uh, unique ads. We're looking at our daily ad spend by market. We're adding codes to unique landing pages by market so we can track our conversions such as form fills and phone calls, you know, from a particular ad, particular market on a particular day, I can tell you how many form, form fills we have, how many phone calls we had, where they're coming from and what it's costing us. That way we optimize our ROI on these. All right, so let's get into, uh, I don't know how much time we have left here. Well, so we got as much time as you need. Okay, let's get into the, the push selling now. So that kind of concludes um an overview and, and i could spend a whole day talking about those first 10 or 15 slides we went through and get into detail and, and frankly i'm happy to answer questions uh, uh, from people of you if they just want to send me an email but i want to now get into what i call push selling okay and and, and really push selling they're inside sales right now i don't have door-to-door -door on here because we're not doing door-to-door -door right now and you know last week last year we did a ton of door-to-door -door sales we have that on hold right now and I'm, i urge everyone you know you don't know when this is going to break and we're still you know we're still kind of keeping people on the back burner for when the time comes that we can't open door-to-door -door back up door-to-door is tough work 
I, I say it's the, the, the hardest, easiest job that you'll ever have. It's easy because if you just knock on 100 doors a day and you're knowledgeable, you're going to make a couple sales. You're going to make two or three sales a day. But getting through those 97 not, not answers or no's, that's tough on anybody's psyche. So that's why I say it's the, the hardest, easiest job there is. If you can take the no, door to door is great. But if you can't take the no, it's bad. You and I were together when we brought in Disney Institute at Scott's Lawn Service, and we learned yeah. a lot from that exercise about door-to-door, -door, and I've seen you uh, execute it as well as anyone I know. Aside from true outbound door-to-door, -door, are you asking any of your lawn technicians to do what Joe Cusick would call a, a cloverleaf door-to-door, -door, where you have a technician and you see the neighbor out across the street um, reaching out to them? Yes, of course. I mean, we have a very, very good truck sale incentive plan that we have. And just like, you know, every group, you always have one all-star in every group. You have that one technician that's a great technician and they just don't like to make sales. So yes, we definitely urge that. The, the other thing that we do, and Real Green provides this, this is one of my favorite things that, that really I get from Real Green from a, from a production standpoint is the, the big advertising flags. I mean, these things are beautiful, man. They're probably, I don't know how big they are. They're they are at least as big as an eight by 10 piece of paper. It's got our huge logo on there. And of course you put that along, you know, with the sign in there. You can't, just, in some states you can use that only, but other states have regulatory issues where you have to use a certain size sign, et cetera. But, you know, I have 13 people on my street to take Experigreen. And I was talking to one of the branch managers about this, and he brought it up to me. He's like, man, I've got 17 people in my neighborhood that I service, and I come home at night after we've serviced that lawn, and I drive through the neighborhood and see all of our advertising signs. It is freaking cool, man. And just think about this, too. Take a page out of this, because more and more people now, you look at in the evening and during the day, there's so many people walking now. It's unbelievable. And these neighborhoods walking their dogs or walking over their lunch because they can now. And put these signs out. We're getting a lot of call-ins because of these signs. On top of that, customers are home. They get to watch what our technicians do on the lawn. You do a great job. The lawn looks good. You put that big old huge advertising sign in there so they know who you are with your 800 number. You're going to make sales and we have been. Well, let me take you back to the 80s when billboard was one of our best uh, sources and now you're able to put those billboards in a lot of places with high visibility. Yes, yes. So moving into the push sales and this, and this really was designed on you know, how do you sell from home? Look, our staff right now is remote. Everybody's working remotely, and that is not that easy. And, and I'll get into that in a few minutes, but a push sale is any sale classified as you, the company, reaching out directly to the customer. So I went through all the marketing pull sales that pull people into your business, into your website, and have them contact you that's a pull sale well cancel customer calling that's a pull sale rejected leads i went through email responders that bail before buying we call those people back we're getting a nice size database on that be, it'll become more and more of a of a bigger lead source for us over time website visitors that bail before buying matching the ip address and hygiene against email and phone number so you can call these people back. If you get a good provider for this, this is not that expensive to do. If you get a good bulk rate on this, it's not that expensive. You can get you can get an email address and a phone number for three and a half cents. I mean, it is not that expensive. Uh, and that is a really good calling source. Then you have your a la carte upsells, you have your referrals, and you have your marketing list for cold calling. And we do that marketing list cold calling a lot. And, you know, with the right telemarketer, telemarketing salesperson on the phone, they make sales. So we have very specific strategies centered around um, selling these, these cancels. Look, these lists are getting beat up, okay? 
everybody that's in lawn care, that's, you know, you call your cancels and you call your rejected leads from however many years that you've been in business. Well, look, people just don't pick the phone up like they used to. And it's a fact, you might get a hold of 15% of your canceled customer list. Now, when you do get a hold of them, we have an extremely high close rate on these. However, in general, people aren't really picking the phone up. What we're finding now is we're getting more people to pick the phone up, and it's really incredible. So we take these lists, we pass them around to different sales reps, we clean them up, and we have a system that we have a call log for every contact or no contact that we make. So we can go through there, clean these lists up, and what we're finding is, and even after, and we've made a ton of canceled uh, sales canceled sales this year from prior years. We we probably have, I'd say, 60% of the people that haven't even been contacted yet. So if you have a good strategy, you're going to continue to make sales. It's the same thing with rejected leads. Typically what happens is you go through about two months of that, the spring breaks, you start doing door-to-door, -door, get efficiencies with door-to-door -door in the spring breaks. What we're finding right now, my sales teams locally in the branches doing outbound canceled and rejected lead calling, they are still maintaining their quotas per day, per rep. And that's because of the strategy that we have around it. And don't forget, you call through that list twice, you're probably gonna get 15, 20% of the people that pick the phone up. So there's still some good sales in there. But I think you, you raise an interesting point. I get probably five telemarketing calls a day and I've got caller ID but I'm in business development uh, for, you know, all across the United States and Canada. I answer every single phone call. I've had a 95% reduction in telemarketing calls. They haven't even called me about the warranty on my car lately. So I got a political call the other night. I talked to her for a good five or 10 minutes. I almost welcomed the call, but I think it might be a really good time to revitalize telemarketing. We're having great success with it right now. We had great success with it in January and February. We're, we're having just as good a success now. So um, don't, don't give up on it for sure. So let's kind of move into managing your managers and stimulating creativity and engagement. I, I think this is super important. You know, we, we, we consistently interact every day, all day. We have two management conference calls per week, openly discussing ideas and successes and results. Uh, every single night, we have a big tech, uh, text chain going with all of our sales managers. We have nine people on the daily text chain. Everybody's talking crap. Everybody's saying how many sales they have. You got memes floating around. You have contests going on. It, it, it's just, it, it's almost like we're closer now as a team. And we did this before but not to the degree that we're doing it right now. And it's really keeping everyone engaged. Everyone updates every single hour. Hey, Charlotte has this many sales. Hey, Denver has this many sales. Indianapolis has this many sales so far. And we have 65% credit card capture rate. So we talk about that all the time. And so if one of the guys is down that night and he sees that, you know, majority of the teams are cooking, he's going to step it up and he's going to get with his team and he's going to make it happen. Managers that have fun with this and challenge other teams with contests. Uh, like I said, we send jokes and memes. We simply have fun with it. Uh, we daily, and we also have a daily review of ROI by rep by material type to determine who's using the material most efficiently. I mean, some people can sell the heck out of cancels, but they couldn't. They couldn't sell a reject if their life depended on it, and and vice versa as well. Some people are just really good at selling rejects. So we make sure that. We're putting our best people on the best material so we continue to get everything we can out of this material on a daily basis. Be patient, okay? Be patient with your sales reps, but not too patient. Letting results, and here's what I mean by this, letting results fall too far under their expectation without taking action, that's going to move on to the next people. Oh, he just got away with only making five sales this week. I'm not going to have to try that hard next week because, you know, He's fine making five sales. That is not true at all, okay? So be careful with that. You gotta constantly motivate, you gotta constantly role play and constantly have fun with it. 
All right. Okay. I thought you were just calling me, Beth, but that was a few minutes ago. Managing sales reps, working remotely, keeping them motivated. Kick the day off. So the standard really here is to have two conference calls a day, and we kick the day off with each sales manager having a conference call with his sales team. And you go through your goals for the day, you go through your callbacks, you role play your callbacks, and you go through that strategy at the beginning of each day. We have a conference call line that we use. It's 25 bucks a month, and you can get up to 15 people on a call at one time. And a couple of our managers, everybody on his team has an iPhone. So they, of course, you know, they'll call one person and they'll do the iPhone chain and they'll get everybody on, 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 you know, on one call that way without using a conference line. So you can do that several ways. We do an hourly check-in with each rep for a quick head check and update. We have daily contests of any kind to keep reps engaged as well. You know, you got to have something to talk about too. Um, I went through alternating calling lists from reps so they get a fresh look at fresh names. You'd be surprised how many of these guys remember the names on their list and they don't want to call them back simply because of that. The other big thing that that we're doing and we're having success with is alternating calling times to maximize contacts. You know, back when I first started, it was mandatory that you worked from nine to noon and three to eight or eight thirty. And you had you maximize your contacts that way. You know, when door to door kicks off, you kind of do noon to eight or eleven to eight take a half hour, hour break sometime in between there. But in order to maximize your contacts, I would definitely recommend if your reps are up for it, I mean, they're home all day, why not? Eight to noon, three to eight are the best times. The other thing is address the current crisis and then let them talk, then proceed as normal. You know, if you don't address it, and we do, we kind of have fun with our phone interactions, uh, most potential customers have been very good with very few negative responses. I mean, we're making between 750 and 1,000 contacts a day and maybe get a handful of people. I wouldn't even say they're rude. They just simply, you know, don't want to talk about it because of the things going on right now. And we found that the, the main issue selling lies with the apprehension of the sales rep. And it's not really with the homeowner. We have some sales reps and sales managers here. They're so positive. And, and man, just picking the phone up when I talk to a couple of these guys, they motivate me and they keep me pumped up. And that type of attitude that you have on the phone, you're going to garner interest. We also use the website as a selling tool. Imagine having someone go to our homepage and they see that we address COVID-19 and we're keeping our, our, our customers safe and our employees safe. That's an awesome selling tool, along with everything else on the website. You may be referencing crabgrass control. Boom, hit the drop down of crabgrass control. Let them see the visual. Let them see how polished you are, how professional your service is. Make it attractive. Use your website to your advantage. What are the tips you would give someone for those that small percentage of customers who are offended that were bothering them with lawn care during this time? You know, we, we address it just, you know, we, we go back to the, the announcement that we are an essential service. You know, first of all, you apologize. You know, you know Mr. Homeowner, I'm really sorry uh, that you feel that way. You know, we're, we're currently deemed as an essential service, and we wanted to make sure that we can provide those services for people that still want them. And I can certainly put you on our do not call list if you would prefer that. Got it. And, and it's, you know, it's, and, and some some reps are just better at handling it than others. And a lot of times, and I was talking to one of my sales managers in uh, in Chicago, when he talks like that, a lot of times the people go, yeah, you know what? Yeah, no, no, that's cool. I mean, I understand. You guys are just, you know, while other people are laying people off, other companies are laying people off. We're so fortunate that we're able to keep our customer or keep our customer serviced and our employees employed. So we also talk about that. Do you talk about the fact that even though you're in multiple cities, you are still a privately owned company and try oh, yeah. to put a local aspect to it? Yeah, we are, you know, we are we are locally owned and we are nationally supported. So you know, we're just doing the best that we can to make sure that we've taken care of the customer and we're taking care of our employees to make sure that they're staying safe 
and the customers are safe as well when we're servicing them. Excellent. I have you on the phone. I'd like to go ahead and tell you about our spring specials. <laughs> and I like. I mean, that's what we do. And you know what? While we have you on the phone, if you got a few minutes, I promise I won't waste your time. I'd like to tell you about our fantastic spring specials and what we're doing for other homeowners in your area. Passion and belief sells. You know, you always have those people that you work with. When they come into work, when they walk in the door, all of a sudden you're motivated. It's because of the way they carry themselves. They're always positive. They're always upbeat. And I gotta tell you, it more that more you know now than any other time, at least for for me, it, it's great to have that positive interaction. And when when we were doing door to door for a week or two into COVID. We weren't getting any pushback at all. It was incredible. We were making sales in door to door in Chicago like crazy. And, you know, one of the guys opened his door and he said, Man, I'm glad to see you. I haven't seen anybody all day long. I've been in the house. So it's it's what you make of the situation. And when you have the passion and belief for your service and you're passionate about keeping the customer safe, keeping your employees safe, keeping your employees employed, making sure they have a great place to work each day. It sells and people get on board with that. And a lot of times they're like, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, what do you have to offer? And we're getting into great conversations. The other thing that we that we do is after we're talking to people on the phone and there's, you know, right now I'm, I'm a little worried about investing the money in, in my lawn. I've got other things that are kind of on my mind. So, you know what? We are, we are, what we're doing, we, we came up with this thing called budget billing. Okay, of course it's not new. We're spreading out the cost of the program as another way to show we care and are passionate about you and your lawn. Would you like to hear about our budget billing process? So we talked about- And are about you finding a higher adoption rate of that right now, the budget billing? Yeah, a little bit. You know, we, we have three ways that you can pay prepay, your auto pay, or your budget bill. And budget billing has always been one of, because it's just a little harder for the rep to set up than, than the auto pay is and to explain it and all that kind of stuff. Now we're, we are, I've, I've seen an uptick this week in budget billing, yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. You do, Are you still getting the prepay and do you always offer prepay year round? Um, we offer prepay through May and then okay. after May we don't offer prepay. No. Yeah, round one essentially. Right, exactly. Hey, you forgot your funny and bullet point too, and I think that's hilarious. Tell us about that. Oh, man, I'm sorry. You know what? Yeah. So you got to be entertaining with people on the phone. And I don't know about the rest of everyone, but in general, some of the funniest people I know are sales managers. They've yeah, got absolutely. more freaking jokes than you can. I mean, I have I have a couple of these guys. I'm on the phone. They got a new joke for me every day. It seems like, and you know, one of the things that we were talking about, of course, I have plenty of jokes for you too, Beth, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the source of all your material, I bet. Yeah, but you can't talk about it today because this is G-rated. <laughs> so, you, know, you got to be entertaining on the phone and engage the customer. And, you know, you could say things like, hey, don't worry, when we come out in full hazmat space suits when treating your lawns, we keep everybody safe. You know, and kind of laugh and giggle. And of course, they're going to know you're kidding. Sometimes people, are you serious? Do you really do that? No, I'm just trying to trying to be funny. You know, trying to make you know light of the situation a little bit and bring some humor in. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Jones, we've got three ways that you can pay. But the one you're probably going to like the most is if you want to prepay and save five percent, we can save you five percent, or you're going to get a complimentary roll of toilet paper. Which would you prefer? So you know, you got to have fun with the stuff. And and if you don't, you're probably going to go crazy. I like it. All right. Let's get into yet another way that you can maintain. So there's, you have your sales and you have your retention. That equals your customer count. And that's really the most important thing is, are you on track to having your budgeted customer count? Let's try and stay as close as we can to the budgeted customer count in this time. So we use a, we use the voice for turf phone system. That's it, an integrated real green partner, yes. Yeah, and it's and it's nimble. So cancels are part of our daily challenges and even more right now. 
we've definitely seen an uptick in, you know, we actually have a COVID-19 cancel code now. And between that and financial, there's been a really big uptick over the last, call it really three, four weeks. And we use the voice of turf phone system, which makes it easy for offsite selling and hot transfers. And we have a dedicated person in each branch and it's always the sales manager. You know, they better have the best shtick there is and the best ability at retaining customers. And I'll tell you what we're finding is a lot of the times people are calling and they're scared, right? It's up to us to calm them back down. Look, we're only out every four to six weeks. The cost of your program is X amount. And, you know, crabgrass is coming. You talk about spring. You paint the beautiful picture of spring and you try and retain them. If that doesn't work, I have a very specific drop down process that I have written and detailed out, you know, what we can offer. You know, you kind of tear this thing down. You give them a little bit of a discount. Then you take an application off to make it more affordable. Then you might give them a pinch more of a discount. Then you might take one more application off and you see if you can retain their services that way. What you know, about sides? Do you offer that? Offer what? Front and sides only. Oh, of course. Yeah, we offer front and sides only. We have a lot of customers that want front and sides only. They have a dog in the back and they just tear the heck out of it. So we do offer front and sides only. Um, and it is part of our drop down process as well. Yeah, our, our, we have a, you know, everyone has a minimum price, but uh, front and sides only is really not that economical. And then we, that's why we talk about the rest of the lawn and we try and maintain that. But if we have to go that route, we will. So the cancel save strategy is big and we're getting some success with that. And everybody's tracking that on a daily basis as well in the branches. We have a system to make sure we're not losing anyone and keeping someone on the books that wants to cancel. You gotta keep it clean. Making it all work day after day and keeping results consistent. This is definitely the hardest thing. You know, some managers are really, really good face to face. And we're getting more and more acclimated to, you know, working with all the people remotely. And we have a pretty good system down now. But look, we're in the people business and we're only as good as our people. I'm not saying anything that anyone doesn't know. We're only as good as our front line is. And this is, you know, for me anyway, it's one of the most challenging times in my history of working in business and in, in the lawn care industry in 25 years. And, you know, a wise person once said to me that there are three words to help us maintain the health of our people and our businesses. And that's truly leadership 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 it's important to stay on your game every single day come up with new things come up with fun things make sure you're interacting with your front line your managers are interacting with your front line consistently and positively every single day and i think you're going to come out okay that's good advice that is the end of my presentation well, you did a fantastic job. Um, one question for you in terms of um, the future, and uh, obviously we're concerned about all Americans and all of our Real Green customers, your employees and and uh, your end consumers. And then it, there's concerns about longer term economic implications. Do you see... Um, anything significantly changing about your offering or your go-to-market strategy from a sales perspective should the economy continue to stagnate in 2020? Look, I, you know, I, like anyone else, I don't have a crystal ball by any means. And I remember back in 2008, 9, and 10 when we had some really tough times economically and, you know, when all that recession started then. And when the stock market did what it did then, of course, things look worse now. But in general, and, and if you've been in the green industry for any amount of time, we're kind of recession proof in a lot of ways. You know, this is one of those things that people take, you know, everyone talks about the staycation. 
people do if they can and if they're still employed, they will continue to take care of their lawn. That's where they're gonna spend the most of their time the next couple of months is on their lawn. Let's green it up, let's thicken it up, let's keep the weeds out, let's maintain it. You know, it's the first thing people look at before they look at your house, they look at your lawn and look at your landscape. I do sincerely believe that we're gonna be okay. We might not have the robust spring sales like we like we have and everyone is experiencing, you know, that, that drop. I mean, our drop's really only been about a 15% drop and we're maintaining sales very well. But who knows if this is gonna get worse and all the experts are saying it is. But at the same time, you also have the opportunity to hire better people. There's a lot of people getting laid off. And like I've always said, you know, you're only as good as the person, and we're talking about selling and marketing here, you're only as good as the person who is selling for you, right? And you can get some really good telemarketing salespeople. And that's why I say all my sales managers that I have interact with, don't stop recruiting. Continue to look for that knockout sales rep who can really get the job done. So that's my people advice. You know, the other advice that I have on continuing your efforts, all those things I talked about with the marketing and the retargeting, I do believe you got to keep in front of your customer three to five more touches to really get someone to come to you versus how a normal spring would be. And we're seeing that because people are still opening our emails. When we send that, you left without saying goodbye. It's 10x the open rate and the conversions are better. So they just need reminded, they need comforted that take care of the home. I mean, look, we're only at what? Every four to six weeks, the average cost is 50 to 60 bucks a stop. So I don't think we're going to get hurt as much as everyone, uh, as everyone is feeling right now. We may get a little later boost too when we get into the end of, of April. That's excellent. Well, I appreciate you sharing and being very generous with your expertise today. I know our customers in the industry appreciate it. I value our friendship and I look forward to the time when we can have a beer together and laugh about this. That's going to happen, right? Yes, it, of course it is. And, and thank you so much for having me, Beth. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, take care.